AM 700 KBYR, the news and talk of Alaska. Most people have gone through things in their life which are difficult to explain. You know, I just went through the birth of uh, another child, and it's difficult to explain to someone who has not gone through the process uh, why it is that after it's over, uh, I go to sleep immediately. Uh, it's, it is an exhausting process for, uh, for the, uh, the husband who's involved seeing their wife um, go through such pain and, and such a... Uh, I don't know. It, it's an amazing experience. It is uh, unfathomable in so many ways. But uh, I want to bring on Colonel Lee Ellis, who he really has gone through something far beyond what most of the rest of us uh, can comprehend and then tries to uh, to package it in a way that the rest of us can use it, which is really going above and beyond. Colonel Lee Ellis, uh, he is author of the book Leading with honor, and I want to welcome you to KB Wire. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks, Glenn. Good to be with you again. Uh, you were in the Hanoi Hilton. You know what uh, cruelty human beings are capable of, and and yet you move past that to try and help people become better. Why? I guess I'm just an optimist in ways, and uh, I think it's just kind of my talent, my gift, my calling to help people grow and develop and be better tomorrow than they were today. I think that's one of the greatest contributions we can make and any leader can make is to develop their people. And it's something I've always been passionate about as a leader in the military and then in uh, not-for-profit and in business. Uh, it's just there's great reward in that. You know, I can I can hear that. And as you go and describe all the different areas of life that we can be involved in, that people would always want to be looking for somebody who who contains with them then the idea of optimism that they need to help other people grow and help other people develop it's got to be the most um needed necessary part of, of a human being and a person who's a leader well i think it's a very important part obviously you have to accomplish the mission as a leader and i think there's the tightrope that every good leader has to walk between getting results getting the job done accomplishing the mission and developing the people and taking care of the people. You know, those are the, the three foundational things of military leadership apply everywhere. First is you have to have good character because nobody wants to follow a leader they can't trust. Two, you have to get results. You have to accomplish the mission. And three, you take care of the people. And that means uh, developing them and helping them get become who they don't even know they can be. Quite often, I think a good leader is able to see the talents and the capabilities, and you just kind of know that this person could go, they're, they're really good here, and they could go higher and higher, and your job is to help them get there. You uh, you have a number of coaching handouts, and if you want to uh, find out more about uh, Colonel Lee Ellis, who's on the program here with us, you can go check him out on our Facebook page, AM 700 KBYR. We have links uh, to uh, various uh, ways to find out more about him. Uh, Freedom, um, I want to make sure, freedomstarmedia.com. Um, yes. Is that a freedomstarmedia.com? It's okay. also leadingwithhonor.com. It's the same website. Leading with Honor just rolls into freedomstarmedia.com. Okay. Leading with Honor. That's an easier one one to say. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're talking again here with Colonel Lee Ellis in the Hanoi Hilton. You were actually there with uh, presidential candidate John McCain. What did you What did you find out most about yourself? I suppose when uh, when you were there. Well, you're, you mentioned that. I went down 11 days after Senator McCain. He went down 27th of October, and I went down the 7th of November, 1967. We came home together. And I think one of the things we learned, we learned we weren't as tough as we were, we thought we were. Uh, there were guys there that were certainly tougher than we were, but we also learned that we, we were able to grow in courage in that situation. And, uh, you know, he showed great courage. They offered him the opportunity to come home early, and he declined that because he said, you know, we're our policy is we go home sick and wounded first and then in order of capture. And there's a lot of guys that have been here quite a bit longer than I have, and I'll wait my turn. So we learned how to the value of doing the right thing even when it was painful. 
uh, you know, we, we, we took torture to resist what them doing. They wanted us to do things that were contrary to our country, that were harmful to our country, to our allies, to our teammates in the POW camp. And we had to refuse that and take torture. So I think we just learned a lot about growing in courage and the value of sacrificing in the moment to do the right thing in the long run. Can you tell me uh, what the purpose, uh, a lot of people are uh, of a new generation, and what they know about uh, the war that you fought in, uh, what you know about it, they don't. They really don't have any idea other than negative connotations as to why we were there and and what we accomplished. Can you very briefly just tell us that? Yeah, well, communism was expanding. That's been when uh, the, the Cold War was getting stronger. Communism was getting stronger, at least expanding, and we thought it was getting stronger. It was taking more, spreading into more and more countries, and it was generally used force to do that. And that's what's happening. Was was happening in Southeast Asia, and we talked about the domino effect. You know, one country falls, the next one falls. So, and quite often, that's the way power grows and moves. So, we kind of drew a line in the sand there with between North and South Vietnam, and said South Vietnam is free, North Vietnam is communist, and we're not going to allow you to come in and take over South Vietnam through force. And so that's why we went over there. And actually, we, it was President Kennedy that really got us embedded in there, and President Johnson, who expanded it significantly with the uh, deployment of uh, large numbers of troops and forces in the air war over over North Vietnam. So, And then that was continued by President uh, Nixon. So it was really uh, both parties, Democrat and Republican, that supported that war and got us in there. It was just the general philosophy of the time. In the end, maybe it proved right. Uh, I think in the long run, we're certainly going to win because uh, Vietnam as a whole now, even though the North did eventually take over when we pulled out, uh, it's becoming very capitalistic. And all the people that I've talked to that have been there recently in the last 10 or 15 years, they talk about how capitalistic it is and how the people are becoming more free, even though they still have a communist government. Well, that's uh, certainly a hope. And you're headed back over there, which I imagine is going to be a, quite a, a, a quite a transformative homecoming on, on a cruise soon. Yeah, that's right. In February the 22nd, I'll be lose, leaving on Crystal Cruises out of Hong Kong for Hanoi and Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City and some other destinations around in Southeast Asia end up in Singapore. But I'm very excited about it. I haven't been back. Uh, many of my friends have been back. They've all had a good experience. Uh, I'm excited about going back. I'll be speaking on the cruise about my experience. So that will be kind of, uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a sweet way to go back, if, to put it in, a, in, a, in, a, in an expression like that, to go back on my own terms and uh, uh, to go back and see the difference, to meet some of the people, and to also share that story and experience with the people who will be going with us. Colonel Lee Ellis is on KBYR here with us, and he's written a book. He served at the, in the Hanoi Hilton alongside Senator John McCain. Leadingwithhonor.com is where you can find him. Can I keep you on, uh, Colonel Ellis? I, I just feel like uh, we have so much left to cover. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. I appreciate that. We have his leadership techniques, his suggestions. uh, What does he really see? What is his view of what's going on in the country right now? So, so much to cover. Uh, Colonel Lee Ellis will be right with us. Gaming Wire Morning News and Comment continues 819 a.m. We'll be back with Colonel uh, Lee Ellis, and uh, he's got a great pieces of information about life so much uh, to learn from him leading with honor.com here's a uh, piece just before we get back to him about the status of the health care uh, implementation and some of the difficulties this from abc's ann compton calling the enrollment hassles unacceptable. President Obama is expected to take the problems head on, vowing to work around the clock to correct them. Until now, the White House has blamed part of the problem on the huge number of people trying to access policies online. It claims 19 million visits to the site so far. Less than half a million were able to actually submit an application for health insurance. Ann Compton, ABC News, the White House. All right, the news and talk of Alaska here. Check us out, and you can find more information about Colonel Lee Ellis on our Facebook page, AM700 KBYR. Colonel Ellis, welcome back to uh, to KBYR. Thanks for being uh, on on with me. 
Thanks, Glenn. Are you having Paul yet in Alaska? You know, we, we it, it went in, it came out, it went back in, and now we're having like the weirdest heat wave you've ever seen in your life. It was nicer than probably 40% of our summer days uh, just yesterday and the day before. So <laughs> we're having like this wonderful heat wave. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's nice. It hasn't even really been, uh, at least where I live, a uh, hard... Uh, frost or or anything uh, to speak of there, so we're happy with uh, with how things are uh, are going as far as our weather is concerned. Um, you speak a lot about uh, personal honor. I'm looking at your coaching handouts, and these seem like a very good uh, guide to family life. Uh, and I think that's really where life starts more than anything else and maybe is the most overlooked part because people get so wrapped up in all the things that go on around us thinking that gee i have to worry about this other stuff where what we really should be worried about is our spouse our children our own family finances and things like that um tell me about knowing yourself yeah thank you for bringing that up i think you the part about the family i think that is so important because everything good and bad in us kind of gets played out at home. Sometimes we're able to hide it elsewhere, but it shows up there. And knowing yourself is so important because that accurate picture, having self-awareness, is really the starting point for all of our personal growth. And I just uh, always encourage people to be on a growth pattern. They ought to be working on one or two things this year to make them better listeners or more uh, willing to speak up or uh, give more encouragement. You know, those kind of things have more courage, whatever it is. So knowing yourself is a starting point because you know where you're strong, but you're also you know what your struggles are. They could be weaknesses if you don't struggle with them. So that gives you uh, the knowledge you need to grow. It also helps you focus your life and your career in a proper area. You're not trying to be somebody else. You can be genuine and authentic. And there's nothing more effective at home, at work, anywhere, in leadership, anywhere other than being authentic. The real you is the most powerful person that you can ever be. You have probably been in lots of management situations, and people, the statistics come out, they say, really, outside of your spouse, the most important person in your life, whether you like it or whether you don't, whether they're good at their job or whether they're bad at their job, is there is your manager, is the person Hi. who oversees you at work. Do you think that's true, first of all? And, and what? give me some stories about managing people and, and the changes you make in their lives. Right. Well, I can uh, tell you that there's a book that came out about, oh, 2001 or so, maybe 2003, somewhere in there, maybe 1999. But it's based on 20 years of research at Gallup. And, and it, the research shows that, that primarily people, good people leave a job and productivity in a job by everybody is determined by the relationship with their immediate supervisor. So the immediate supervisor is the key person to really light somebody up, get them inspired about work, get high productivity, or basically turn them off by either fear, intimidation, over-control, all those sorts of things that keep a person from really being able to contribute all that they could contribute. So I think uh, you know part of our leadership training is always focused on helping the manager, supervisor, leader to be able to manage everybody differently, fairly, in equality and fairness, but when it comes to the technique of how you manage people, you got to do it differently for every individual's uniqueness. I'll give you an example. With me, you better manage me with a strong hand and a two-by-four upside the head if I get out of line, or I won't even notice. I won't even hear <laughs> anything that's subtle. With my wife, she's just the opposite. Uh-huh. She's... She picks up on the subtleness. In fact, you just kind of give her the manual, and she'll read it and follow it. Wow. That, I want. that, that is, uh, I, first of all, for many of the people out there who are managers, I, this, I would imagine, is probably unknown by 90 to 99% of them. Yeah. It, it, it's a big area of growth for everybody. And kind of related to that is that we are all, by personality, bent toward either getting results or having good relationships. If you're you, as a good leader, you got to be able to do both. One of them is going to be your strong point, but you need to be able to do some things in the other one to stay out of trouble and to be a decent leader. 
So if you're highly results-oriented, then you have to learn to give positive feedback. You have to learn to be a good listener. You have to learn to get other people's opinions before you make decisions, those kind of things. And that's very hard for those results-oriented people to do. On the other hand, if you're highly relational, then you have to toughen up. You have to get focused on schedules and deadlines and holding people accountable and making sure that you've communicated very clearly what your expectations are and then following up when they're not met. And that's very hard for the relationship people. So there's plenty of room in there for us all to grow. And to be honest, I could probably make a living just on that relationship results thing because it's so it's so widespread and it, it's a universal principle. Well, it's it's very simple to understand, and I think that it probably knows, uh, requires knowing yourself <laughs> better than most people do. But uh, what a great opportunity there. Colonel Lee Ellis is here on KBYR. If you have a question, 274-5297, 274-KBYR. Leadingwithhonor.com. You can go find out more about him on our Facebook page, AM700 KBYR, in order to see that. Um, you know, we're, we're in the Internet age where there are very few restrictions on what you could see. The Playboys used to be, you know, in a special area of the store. They were covered, you know, even magazines, you know, like the fitness magazines, which are, you know, somewhat pornographic these days. They're out in full view. Uh, you have a piece here about guarding your character and uh, that this is a second part of the uh, the coaching process that you try and give people. Uh, is it hard or easier to guard your character these days? What, what do you suggest people do? Well, I think it's much harder because the standards and expectations are not as high and not as clear as they have been in the past in the culture in general. You know, the school, the church, the home, all of those key values, institutions, school, church, and home, uh, have been undermined and eroded in their power and the influence in the last 20 to 30 years by the media, Hollywood, TV, all those kind of things that have kind of been showing other values where people kind of give a wink and nod at uh, behaviors that are really not helpful and not appropriate. So uh, it's very difficult that. Now, all of us have to guard our character because really we're only one step away from being a criminal or, uh, in fact, I tell my CPA to get me as close to the line on my taxes as he can without going over. So literally, I'm a That'll step just away. be between you and me, though. We won't, we won't tell anybody right. else that. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, as a business person, you know, I, I face decisions every day that uh, are ethical decisions where I have to make a decision to do the right thing. And sometimes it's a struggle, especially if I'm emotionally uh, involved in it. And so I have people that I ask for counsel about tough decisions. But, see, I think unless you actually make a, think through it and make a commitment, it's going to be, the temptation is going to come. And if you wait until you're inside or faced with, face-to-face with a temptation, you may not have the strength at that point to make, to actually live up to you, what you think are your character uh, foundational You have issues. to train yourself before you exactly. get into the situation, and, and that means you go through it mentally uh, over and over again so that you're ready to respond properly and that's really what character is it's a it's something that's a sort of set in stone that's an automated automatic response i'm talking here with colonel lee ellis uh leading with honor.com and he was in the hanoi hilton has a lot of suggestions and, and a lot of uh, great things to learn about yourself and about being a leader uh we've got about a minute left here and i wanted to get your take just briefly on Fighting to win. What what could have happened in the last the government slowdown, as I call it, um, for people who wanted lim- limited government to win? If you have a thought on it. it, say that again. You want limited government to win? Yeah, I mean, people. The, the essential battle here is between limited government and, and oh, yeah. you know centralized yeah, government. Well, you know, uh, I'm working on a book right now on accountability, and uh, you know, accountability is. Uh, you know, doing your responsibility, doing your duty, uh, keeping your commitments, those kind of things. And, uh, you know, I don't think a business can be accountable and spend more than they make. A family can't do that. And so I think that's one of the problems in Washington we see is that uh, trying to continue to spend when there's not the money there, even though we're taking in more money in the government than we've ever taken in. And then, of course, with that, it's the expansion of government that's actually taking up all that money. So 
Uh, the amazing thing is, all you have to do is watch the government do anything and tell me what they do right very often. Now, our military does a pretty good job, but beyond that, uh, and the air, I think the air traffic controllers do a really fine job, but there are not many areas of government where you could say the performance is better uh, by being part of the government. And it wouldn't be as part of an individual corporation that has much more accountability. I mean, look at what's happening with the Affordable Care Act sign-up right now. They've been working on that uh, online sign-up for three years. Yeah, we're going to we're going to close in on a billion dollars, and it's still a total disaster. Uh, Colonel Lee Ellis, I want to recommend his site to you. Leading with honor.